Hey everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another tutorial from XNA covering networking. Last tutorial, we discussed a way to enable the game to communicate with the server, and whenever another client sends something, we just displayed a message box saying, Message received, thank you for the message server. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is expand on that message box and to use the byte protocols and display a different message box depending on the protocol that's being sent. So what are the two types of protocols? Well, a server by default sends a protocol whenever a new player joins or a player disconnects. So those are the only two protocols we can use at the moment until we have another client that's a game instead of the telnet. So that's what we're going to use for the demonstration purposes is to filter out the messages incoming and then this will be built on when we can actually move a character, shoot a bullet or something like that. So we have the stream received and what we want to do here is to go into the stream received uh, method and we want to use the read buffer. So we need a way to read the buffer. So the what we need to do is create a memory stream and binary reader. Now these are going to be used to reading and uh, writing to the read stream. Okay, so at the very top where we have the public class game one, where we have all of our IP address, port, buffer size, read buffer, uh, we need to create a memory stream and a binary reader. Now, once you add the memory stream, you have to add the using system.io. So we have a memory stream and we're going to read. And then we need to have a binary reader. Okay, so we're going to read and we need to have a binary reader to use that read stream value. So inside the initialize, we need to have a read stream is equal to new memory stream and reader is equal to new binary reader with the read stream. Okay. So now we get our everything all set up. We can now read the data, but we need to actually code it. So inside the stream received, this is going to be called whenever we receive any data. Let's go ahead and delete this message box and go ahead and leave this line down at the very bottom. All right, so int byte red is equal to zero. We want to determine how many bytes of data we receive and if it's zero, we don't want to read any data because there is no data to be read. So let's throw in a try block because we don't want the program to crash if we sent bad data. We just want it to display some information. Now this is an asynchronous method. I anchors, I asynchronous result. So let's go ahead and lock client dot get stream. So what does this lock do? Since this is an asynchronous method, two calls can be made to it and they can run in parallel. And what this lock does, it if one method, if one like thread is using this method at once and another thread wants to use this method, it cannot continue until the other method is finished with this lock. Which means that if we have two calls to the stream received method going at the same time, one of them will be able to continue. The other one has to wait before the other one finish. That's what this lock means. Client.getStream.endRead. We want to end the read and we pass it the AR value that we have from the top. 
So we get the amount of bytes we can read. And if it's zero, we do not, we just disconnect from the server because we sent bad data and we don't want the program to crash. So we have a catch exception ex. If you haven't watched my podcast on try catch, this explains it pretty well. Uh, you can throw a message box show ex message. Okay, so we have a try catch. Now, if bytes red is equal to zero, we want to disconnect from the server. So how do you disconnect from the server? Well, we have a TCP client object that we created uh, previous tutorials. So we call client.close, and that will close the instance and request the underlying TCP connection to be closed. So we call close, and then we'll be disconnected. And then we do not want to continue with this method, so we can do return here. Okay, so now we know for sure that we have bytes to be read so when we have that we can continue and assume that we have data to be read so let's go ahead and create the data array it's byte array and it's a new byte and the size of it is going to be bytes read okay so now how do we get to the uh, data and how do we store that into a different data byte array so we need to have a for loop for inti is equal to zero while i is less than bytes red i plus plus so now we set data sub i is equal to read buffer sub i we're just getting a local copy of the read buffer array into the data array Now, once we do that, we need to process the data. So we see, uh, call it whatever you want. I like to call it process data. And let's pass it data. All right, so now we need to generate that method. And let's go ahead and delete this line. All right, so now this is where the actual data will be read from. We have data here that we can read and the way that the server is set up is we're using byte protocols. This is probably the easiest way to manage a server uh, because we're using byte protocols. We know that any message we send, the very first thing that's contained in that message is a byte. We know that for a fact. So we know that it's a byte and we know that it contains what the message is. Is it a new player that joined? Is it a player that disconnected? Is it if we if a player moves or a bullet was created? We know for a fact that that byte will tell us what to expect. Is it going to be a float? Is it going to be an int? Is it going to be a string? That byte will let us know. And you have to set up protocols for both the server and the client to use those protocols uh, properly. So we want to read the data and we need to use that by using the read stream. So read stream, we need to first clean up the data from the last time we read the data. So we need to set the length of the read stream to zero. So this just clears out the last thing we did and we set the position back to zero as well. So we start from the very beginning. This just resets the data from the last time we read information. Okay, so now we set read stream dot write. We need to write the data to the read stream before we continue. I know that's kind of a very weird thing to do. We need to write the data to a reader in order to read the data. It's kind of weird when you think about it. So we pass it the data, which is, needs to be a byte array, and we pass it the offset. We do not want to offset. We want to use the entire data and the count, so data.length, which gets the count of the array. Okay, so we wrote the information to a reader, read stream, and now we need to use the reader to read the information. But first, we need to reset the information yet again. 
Because it wrote the data, so now it's at the position X, wherever the data ends. So we need to reset it back to zero so we can read it from the beginning. Okay, so now we need to set up the protocols. And what I like to do is I like to right click the game, go to add new item that's outside of the window here, but there should be a new item in that window. Now we want to add a class and let's call it protocols. Okay, now delete the class and public enumerated type, let's call it protocol. Okay, so now let's look at the server for a second. We know right now there's only two things that can be sent. A new player protocol and a disconnect, disconnected player protocol. Those values are 1 and 0. So let's set disconnected is equal to 0. Connected is equal to 1. So that sets up the protocol values. So let's go ahead and save everything. Go back to the game. So let's just set the protocol P. Okay, so now we need to expect a protocol value. So just like before, we need to wrap everything in a try catch. If we sent bad data, we do not want the program to crash. We just want to display the information. Okay, so now that we have everything in a try catch, what we want to do is try to read the data. And like I said before, the first thing that every message will have is the byte protocol that determines what the message contains. So let's set P is equal to protocol reader dot read byte. You can read byte, you can read string. If you want to read a float, it's called read single. Float is sometimes referred to as single. Okay, so now we get the protocol. Now here's where we can go into the good stuff. If p is equal to protocol dot connected. player has connected else if p is equal to protocol dot disconnected so the player has disconnected so once we get the protocol, we can manipulate the information based on the protocol type. And you can do this for every single protocol. You can make this in a switch statement, but I prefer if and a bunch of else ifs. And it just makes it look a lot cleaner. Okay, so that is it. Okay, so I made a mistake here when I was coding it. Uh, this is why I prefer the other way where the code is complete and I don't make mistakes. But inside the for loop, when the stream received method, when we were coding it inside the for loop, where we had to set data sub i is equal to read buffer sub i, I pressed the number 1 instead of i, so everything would get the value of 1. Uh, so anyway, change that to i if you copied my code exactly. Mm -hmm. Just make that data sub i is equal to read buffer sub i. All right, so now uh, when I was doing the recording, it when I disconnected, it said player has connected. That's why we needed to fix that, and now we are ready to go. So press F5 to run it, and the server is running. And let's go ahead and start the telnet. Alright, so now we press enter and now we see the pop-up player has connected, click OK. Now we disconnect and hopefully we'll see player has disconnected, which we do, click OK. Now remember the last tutorial, whenever I closed the window, 
the uh, game shut down and you want to know why if I close it out you will get a we wrapped everything in a try catch remember that you will get a exception thrown and if we didn't do the try catch it would just end the program immediately so now we have a try catch now we are saying we are unable to read data from the transport connection and the existing connection was forcibly closed by the remote host so now we could continue the game if we want to or close it out so that's why we needed the try catch there we can do some manipulation which we'll get into, go into in a later tutorial we'll actually expect that at the very end of the server and we'll do something about that so anyway that's it for this tutorial we just made it a uh, more detailed communication between the client and the server and we had the protocol set up just two for right now once we enable the more detailed communications we can add like player has moved new bullet or something like that so anyway that's it for this tutorial we expanded on the stream received method we need to get a local copy of the read buffer array and make sure that we are using the uh, sub i instead of the one and pass it to the process data or whatever you called it method and then we can actually go in and see the results all right so stay tuned for the next tutorial we'll go ahead and build on this and uh i hope to see you next time